Hello, in this next series of lessons we're going to be looking at a poem called Catherine. It is a poem that deals with conflict but it also deals with um, identity and it's um, an element of identity that will be familiar to every single person who listens to that poem in one way or another. So we're going to begin to see what that might be. As with previous lessons, there is a Google form that I'd like you to refer to, pausing the video whenever uh, you need to fill in one of the answers. hope that helps and I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. First thing I want you to do is to find your uh, Year 8 Poetry um, booklet and find this poem. It's on page 7, so if you haven't got it, make sure that you go off now and find it. Right, OK, so families generally are made up of a number of different people. Everybody's family is different. Um, there's no such thing anymore as a nuclear family. Um, and we all slot together. We have we, we fit together and people depend upon each other for different different um, elements of their personality and their identity. So I want you to think about what your own ro role is in your family. Do you have siblings? Are you the oldest, the youngest? In what order were you born? And does that change your identity? Perhaps youngest children get away with more than others. Middle children tend to be peacekeepers. Do you live with parents, grandparents, carers? How does that change your role within your family? What is that role? Are you um, somebody who, who really does hold the family together or do you just rely on people uh, much more? So um, it's quite a difficult question to ask really, but have a think about it. Um, what expectations are you for your future, for now? How are you expected to behave within the family? How are you not expected to behave? What restrictions are there? And how will that change as you grow up? And that's important given now you are on the cusp of becoming a teenager. So as you can see here, we've got some pictures of mothers and their, um, their children at various different stages from being a baby, completely dependent on their mother to being um, a young person breaking three and we, free. And we can see um, different emotions here. Your first question then on your Google form is how do you think your identity within your family will change as you grow up? So just write a sentence just explaining how you think your identity with your, within your family will change as you grow up and you might want to use your relationship with um, the, the uh, main adult or adults in your family um, as, a, uh, as a, a springboard for that. Just about every poem you will ever come across um, has an, a really important conflict at its heart. Some moment where you have two things that come up against each other and clash with one another. It might be ideas, it might be feelings, it might be experiences. This poem is no different. Remember, most poems are written to express or explore a particular idea. So um, as we read through, we're going to see if we can identify what that conflict is. So this is a picture of Gillian Clark, who is the poet who's written this poem, um, and it's written about the relationship between a mother or the speaker or narrator and her daughter. So that will give you a bit of context and then we're going to read the poem. So have a pen ready to take any notes as we go along. I'd like you to take notes about the about section, the who, who is speaking, who are they speaking to, what, what is happening. Um, when, when does it take place, where, where is it set, um, and then possibly why, why has it been written. Now the answers won't come to you straight away, so just get the notes that you can to begin with. It's been written in two stanzas. I'd like you to think about what happens between the first stanza and the second stanza. Is there a shift anywhere? And just one more bit of information before I start. Catherine, the title of this poem, is also the name of Gillian Clark's daughter. So this is a poem addressed to her. Catherine, I can remember you, child, as I stood in a hot white room at the window, watching the people and cars taking turn at the traffic lights. I can remember you, our first fierce confrontation, the tight red rope of love which we both fought over. It was a square environmental blank, disinfected of paintings or toys. I wrote all over the walls with my words, coloured the clean squares with the wild, tender circles of our struggle to become separate. We want, we shouted, to be two, to be ourselves. Neither won nor lost the struggle in the glass tank clouded with feelings which changed us both. I am still fighting you off as you stand there with your long, straight, strong, long brown hair. 
and your rosy defiant stare bringing up from the heart's pool that old rope tightening about my life trailing love and conflict as you ask may you skate in the dark for one more hour now if at this stage you're still saying oh, i don't really understand this that's fine you have to read the poem through several times and look at it in different ways in order for it to gradually reveal its uh, layers of meaning so don't worry what you should be able to do at this stage when you think about it is answer the questions who is speaking or who might be speaking what type of person and who are they speaking to now I'm hoping that you can answer that so just take a minute try and jot that down um, either on your sheet or on another piece of paper just some notes for the about section um, who is speaking so who is the narrator of this poem the speaker and who is it addressed to and then anything you can think of about what is happening, where it's taking place, and when it might be taking place, and if that's the same all the way through. Okay. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is to concentrate on the first stanza. I'd like you to read it through again, and when you've read it through, I'd like you to underline any words related, related to fighting or conflict. I'd like you to consider what mood these words evoke. Can you think of any feelings linked to it? What might it be suggesting about the feelings of the speaker? And then, of course, what event might be being described here? Don't worry if you haven't quite got it yet, but really think about it. OK, pause the video and see if you can make those notes. OK, we're going to focus now on um, two lines. Um, I can remember you, our first fierce confrontation. Now this is a massive clue as to the event that Gillian Clark is describing in this poem. What do you think it might be our first fierce confrontation? I wonder how many of you um, pictured this as the first fierce confrontation. Perhaps not. Perhaps if you read this to somebody who has given birth themselves, they might recognize this next image. And here we have a much more realistic um, picture of what happens when a mother and, the, and uh, her child first confront each other, when they first see each other. It is fierce. There will be shouting. There will have been some form of battle. Um, I'd like you to notice the repeated F sounds, those fricatives first fierce confrontation which adds to a sense of anger and um, passion really so um, if you hadn't got that by now hopefully you realize the, the event that's being described in stanza one is the birth of the poet's daughter the birth of Catherine so with the first fierce confrontation, Gillian Clark has established what the snapshot of human life is being explored in this poem. She then goes on to, to extend that idea and she describes the tight red rope of love which we both fought over. Now we both is the mother and her daughter at the moment of the daughter's birth. What I'd like you to do is two things. Firstly, I'd like you to try and identify the technique. What literary technique has been used here to do in the tight red rope of love, where one thing is described as if it were something else? And the second, second thing is, I want you to tell me what that rope, that tight red rope of love, might symbolise literally from the moment that she's describing, that moment of birth, and metaphorically in a larger sense, what sort of, um, what might it represent about their relationship? So have a think, the first one's more straightforward. The second one will involve a little bit of thinking, but see what you can work out. Now, as we've already established, Gillian Clark has included quite a lot of, um, of, of words associated with fighting and conflict in this first stanza of her poem as she describes that moment of human experience when a child is born, when a mother begins her relationship with her daughter. Now I want to see how this phrase, the tight red rope of love we fought over, um, adds to and emphasises that idea of conflict. 
And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to explode that quote. We're going to look in detail at each of the different words within it to look at their connotations and associations. Now, the connotations of a word are all the ideas that are suggested by that word. Some of them perhaps are not relevant in this context. A lot of them will be. So what I want you to do is to work through each of the different words that carry meaning in that um phrase and to look at their connotation, the ideas that they suggest. So you might start with the noun rope, since that's the main one here. Um, what are the connotations and associations of that noun rope? Where would you use a rope? Um, is it um, ever positive? Is it ever negative? In what context might you um, have a rope? What's it for? Um, love, very positive, wonderful emotion. How is it changed by being described as a tight red rope of love? Then we're going to look at the adjectives, tight and red. If somebody holds you tight, is that a positive thing? Or could it be a negative thing? What are the connotations of that adjective tight? And then similarly, red has a whole range of uh, connotations, ideas that it makes us think of. So just take a moment, write that down and Add your annotations to, the, to that short phrase. Just try and work out why Gillian Clark has chosen to use those specific words to describe that thing that physically links the mother and the daughter. There are lots of different images in this first stanza that might reveal something about the relationship between the mother and the daughter at this crucial moment. But I just want to focus for now on this last two lines of this stanza. We want, we shouted, to be two, to be ourselves. I want you to ask yourselves what's actually happening, literally, at that moment, and what it might suggest about the relationship between the mother and the baby daughter at that point. Is it straightforward or perhaps could you consider more than one interpretation? And, and what I want you to try and do is layer your thinking. So using those modal verbs like could, should, may, I'd like you to begin to explore what this might be suggesting about the relationship between the mother and the daughter. We want, we shouted to be two, to be ourselves. The final thing I want you to do now is to try and sum up your response to the first half of this poem. Think about um, Gillian Clark's intentions. What questions is she asking us about motherhood? What um, new ideas is she suggesting to us about what it means to be a mother based perhaps on her own experience? How does it make you feel differently about motherhood in, generally, in general? What's your response and what are your feelings? Next lesson, what we'll do is we'll look at the second half of the poem, we'll try and pull them together and we'll see what she has to say about relationships and parenthood generally and how that links to our central theme of identity. And here we're going to be looking at the battle and the struggle for identity.